In this video, we will be going through law of definite proportions. Now before jumping into the law and understanding it using all the chemicals and compounds, let's actually try to understand this law by taking an everyday example. Now imagine you're having a small get-together of around 10 friends. And for those 10 friends, you're going to make chocolate chip cookies. Now your recipe book tells you the ingredients for exactly 10 people so you turned out to be lucky but then suddenly the phone rings and now instead of 10 people there are going to be 20 people in the get-together now you begin to profusely sweat because your recipe book gives you recipe for only 10 people but now that double of people are going to come so is there any way out of this can we use chemistry or a little bit of simple math to come out of this problem. Yes. Now what we do here is, you don't need to be a chef to know this. You just need to have a little bit of intuition and you can say that if double the people are coming, then I will have to double the ingredient. So basically, no matter what quantity you make, the proportion of ingredients will always remain the same. And chocolate chip cookies will be made out of the same ingredient. It doesn't happen that if you're making for 10 people, you're going to use different ingredients and making for 20 people, you're going to use different ingredients. The same logic applies in chemistry too. This is law of definite proportions. Now, today we all say that this is a very simple law. Why did this even become a law? It might be very simple in the chef case. But back two or three centuries ago, chemists did not really understand the composition of compounds and uh, different chemicals. And hence, this law was postulated. Now, what is the statement of the law? A given compound contains exactly the same proportion of elements by mass. Now, to understand this, let us take an example. Let us take the example of carbon dioxide. So this is a compound. We know that because there are two elements, carbon and oxygen. Now here in the statement, there are two words, that is proportion and mass. These words are really important and we will have to keep it in mind throughout. So what this says is that a given compound contains exactly the same proportion of element. That means the ratio of carbon to oxygen will always remain a constant. Let us see what that constant is in a minute, but for now, let us say it is a constant. So what this says is that no matter how much of carbon dioxide you have, no matter what the source of carbon dioxide is, it will always be made up of two elements, carbon and oxygen, and these will be in a constant ratio. So to continue, let me give you some preparations of carbon dioxide so we can actually define what I'm trying to say. So the first preparation is by heating limestone. Limestone is a common name for calcium carbonate. So by heating it, this little triangle is called as delta and it represents heating or addition of heat. So when you heat calcium carbonate, you get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now remember, this is the first method of preparation. Now let us take the second method of preparation. That is by action of hydrochloric acid on calcium carbonate. So here on the reactant side, you have calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. And on the product side, you have calcium chloride and water, that is H2O molecule, and carbon dioxide. Once you balance the reaction, you're going to get two HCl here. So this is a balanced chemical reaction. So here again, you're going to get carbon dioxide. So this is the second method of preparation. The third method of preparation is by heating sodium bicarbonate. NaHCO3 is the molecular formula of sodium bicarbonate. So when you heat sodium bicarbonate, you're going to get sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, and water molecule, and carbon dioxide. So the products are common H2 and CO2 are common here. So again, this is the third method of preparation of carbon dioxide. So the fourth method of preparation is by burning coal. 
So coal is nothing but carbon. And you know that for combustion, you definitely require oxygen. Oxygen is supporter of combustion. And when coal burns in oxygen, you're going to get carbon dioxide. So this is the fourth method. There are, there are many other methods, but let us for now consider these four methods. So what this law exactly states is that the ratio of elements in this carbon dioxide, in this carbon dioxide, in this carbon dioxide, and in this one remains a constant. You know that the sources are different. Here it is calcium carbonate. The procedures are also different. It is only heating calcium carbonate. Here you react calcium carbonate with hydrochloric acid. Here you heat sodium bicarbonate. And here you burn carbon in the presence of oxygen. So you see that the sources and also the procedures are different. But in all these procedures, carbon dioxide is common. So let us take the ratio of carbon dioxide in the first reaction. Carbon atomic mass is 12 and oxygen is 16. But there are two atoms of oxygen. So see there are two atoms of oxygen. So you multiply it by 2. So what you get the ratio is 2 1s are 2, 2 6s are 12, 2 3s are 6, 2 8s are 16. So the ratio is 3 is to 8. Now let us consider the ratio of carbon and oxygen in the second case. Here again there is a single atom of carbon, so it is 12, and two atoms of oxygen, so it is 2 into 16. You will again get 3 is to 8. The same applies here, again there is a single atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen, so the ratio is 3 is to 8, and it is same here also. So you see in all these procedures, the sources are different, the procedure itself is different. But yet carbon dioxide is made up of carbon and oxygen and has a same ratio 3 is to 8, 3 is to 8, 3 is to 8 and 3 is to 8. This is what law of definite proportion means. No matter what is the source, no matter what is the pro procedure, you'll always get the elements in a fixed definite ratio but this ratio is considered only with mass. Remember we have taken here atomic mass and ato not atomic number. Now in all these examples, there was a single molecule of carbon dioxide. So see, 1CO2, uh, 1CO2, 1CO2, 1CO2. Let us see if there were two molecules of carbon dioxide, would the ratio yet remain same? So if there is 2 times CO2, 2 molecules of carbon dioxide, there will be 2 into 12, that is there are 2 atoms of carbon in, this, uh, in these 2 molecules combined. And there are four atoms of oxygen. You multiply these two. And there are four atoms of oxygen. So four into 16. So when we simplify this, you'll get two ones, are, two eights are 16. Four ones are four, four threes are 12. So you see again, the ratio is threes to two. So you can uh, try this for a number of examples. So now when we have understood the law and also have found the proportion in which carbon and oxygen are present, in carbon dioxide let us see how to solve some numericals so imagine we have around 44 grams of carbon and you want to completely utilize this 44 grams of carbon and produce carbon dioxide so to produce this carbon dioxide you would need oxygen so what is the amount of oxygen that you require that will completely react with this carbon to produce carbon dioxide is the question so we know that the ratio of carbon to oxygen is 3 is to 8 or 3 by 8 if you write it in the form of fraction. So let us write how much grams of carbon is present. Carbon is 44 and we do not know the amount of oxygen we requires. So let us just write it as O. So this carbon to oxygen mass ratio is 3 is to 8. So now we can see that if we Simplify it further, we get 8 into 44 is equals to 3 is equals to 3 into O. So when we simplify it further, we get oxygen is equals to 8 into 44 upon 3. 
So let me quickly drag my calculator out. So 8 into 44 divided by 3. You get 117.33. So what this means is to react with 44 grams of carbon, you would need 117.33 grams of oxygen. So another question here is, when we utilize this 44 grams of carbon at 117.33 grams of oxygen, how much of carbon dioxide is produced? So to know that, you simply add the amount of carbon utilized and the amount of oxygen utilized. So the sum of these two will give you carbon dioxide. Their sum is 44 plus 117. 0.33 that is 161.33 so totally 161.33 grams of carbon dioxide is produced so you can expect a number of examples but they will be mostly in this form that you just need to remember the ratio now I have talked throughout the video only about carbon dioxide there can be anything for example H2O let me quickly do that the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen in H2O is the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 but there are 2 atoms of hydrogen and the atomic mass of oxygen is 16 but there and there is only one atom so it is 1 into 2 divided by 16 so you would get 1 is to 8 so for every 1 gram of hydrogen you would need 8 grams of oxygen or if you are taking in some other units say if for every one mole of hydrogen, you would require eight moles of oxygen. Calculating this ratio is very important.